All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to open up and disassemble this HP laptop model 15-DY2073DX. All right, so first thing we're gonna do is remove the rubber feet here. I just use my fingernail, but you can use like a small pry tool or even a flathead screwdriver, but be careful because you can scratch up the plastic cover here if you use something like metal. All right, anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and peel this up. So I have peeled this up before. You do wanna make sure you peel up the adhesive with the rubber piece. Don't just peel the rubber piece separate or the rubber is gonna stretch out and then it's gonna be hard to put it back. All right, we're gonna be using a PH1 or JIS1 screwdriver to remove all the screws from the bottom. You wanna keep them in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths. The way I do that is I put them flat side down like that on my desk in the pattern I remove them. All right, if this video helps you out, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helps you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. All right, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. But other than that, let's go ahead and continue removing all these screws, all right? Also, um, the rubber piece back here is thicker than the one at the opening, so keep that in mind, don't switch them around. All right, once you got all the screws out, what I like to do is I like to flip it upside down, and then between the palm rest and the base, there's a little gap, so I get my fingernails in there, and then I'll push with my thumbs on the back. So just like this, you can see how it pops out, and we'll just go all the way around. Okay, once we get that, I close it up, then I go around the side and repeat the process, pushing on the back. Okay, the corners can be a little tricky, kind of go to the corner, and then same thing, kind of pry it up. All right, obviously if you don't have fingernails, you can use pry tools, but to me this works best, all right? So same thing, just work your way up, and then go around the edge here, and pry that, all right? So this piece, the back can be a little tricky, you kind of just wiggle it and pull it, okay? All right, so we'll go to the back as well, and there we go. All right, so now we got the bottom cover off, that's what it looks like. Okay, let's go ahead and brush this up a little bit since it's a little dusty here. Okay, brush that up and then use like an air blower to kind of blow the loose dust away. All right, so there we go. All right, so inside here we have the hard drive which we're gonna be replacing. Um, there are a few uh, PH1 or JS1 screws, so let's go ahead and remove those. The battery model number is HT03XL. That's the HP uh, model number. They also have an HP spare part number here, which is what, L11119-855, all right? But usually HT03XL is good enough. Okay, so there were three screws at the top and then you got two screws at the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and pull this out. So I, after I remove the screws, I go from here and then I just pull straight up. And that's how you remove the battery. Again, model number HT03XL. All right, so we're gonna get the replacement battery here. Okay, so here's the replacement battery. It's an aftermarket one, so it doesn't have the HP branding on it, but it should work just as well. All right, so there's that HT03XL. Um, since we're going to be working on other stuff, let's actually put the battery in later. Uh, we're going to replace the SSD with another M.2 PCI NVMe SSD. Hopefully it will speed it up. We got one screw here. Okay, remove that screw. This goes up slightly and then you can kind of wiggle and pull it out. And this is a Samsung SSD, but it's one of their low end ones. All right, so we're replacing it with a Crucial uh, T500 SSD, which is a lot faster. So. We'll see, hopefully it will speed up the computer. It increases like read and write speeds, all right? So you kind of push that all the way in. Make sure that you can see it's in the notch here. That's how we know it's lined up right. All right, and we'll get this back in. One thing um, to be safe, since we took out the battery, um, we're gonna carefully open the laptop, right? Usually when you do the SSD and RAM, you don't need to worry about this, but I'll show you just in case you do other stuff. So after you disconnect the uh, battery you want to press and hold the power button here for about 15 seconds to drain any residual power All right, you can hold it longer if you want, but uh, 15 seconds is usually good enough Okay, so we'll hold it a few more seconds here All right, if you're gonna mess with the LCD LVDS connector, this is very important 
Um, if you don't, there's a good chance you can actually fry the backlight circuit. All right, if you're wondering, this is the LCD LVDS connector. There's a flip latch there, and then you can kind of lift and pull that cable out. I'm gonna leave that in place. You also have this cable here, which connects the two USB ports here, okay? Um, the DC jack charge port connector, you do have to take the three hinge screws out and lift the hinge up. If you're gonna take it out, you would pull this hinge up, and then you would thread it through, where is it here? Okay, it goes around, sorry, it goes around underneath here. It's going under this cable all the way around here and it actually plugs in under there. That, you just grab the wings and you kind of wiggle and pull it out, All right? You got the fan connector here. Usually the way I get that out is I go underneath just the connector itself, not the piece that's around it. You can see it's actually two pieces. So there's the connector that sits in it and then the plastic around it. I don't want to mess with that because sometimes the solder is not good on these connectors and then it can rip out. So that's why I don't take out all the components unless I'm actually replacing or upgrading them. All right, so there's the keyboard connector here. It looks like there's an extra slot here, which I'm not too sure what that's for, but most likely a keyboard backlight, because I don't think, let me see, does this have a backlit keyboard? Yeah, I don't think this has a backlit keyboard. So I think some models, they have a backlit keyboard and they use this port. Then you got the keyboard, uh, sorry, the touchpad or trackpad connector here, also these flip latches. Uh, this, I believe, is probably if you're going to add a 2.5 inch SATA hard drive here. Um, and then you got a SD card slot here, as well as the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack, it seems, or headset jack. All right, you got two sticks of RAM. So if you want to pull it out, you just pull these two taps to the side, pops out like that. And the RAM here is PC4 3200 AA. You should be okay with any PC4 3200 AA RAM. So if you want, you can put two 16 gig sticks to upgrade to 32 but usually 16 gigs is plenty. All right, you got the wireless card here. If you wanna see how to remove that, there's this plastic piece on top and then the tails of the antennas, you wanna actually pull them straight up, but I'm gonna leave that there. There's one screw that comes out like the SSD. All right, you got the other speaker connector here. Again, it's one of those that you get underneath and pop it out. And I think that's just about it. Um... Yeah, also this speaker connects this speaker with a wire. I don't know if you can see it, but it's under there and it runs along to that one. Okay, so that's pretty much all I'm gonna show in here. This was a quick look. CPU is soldered in place if you're wondering. All right, some people ask like BIOS chip and stuff. I have no idea because I don't replace BIOS chips, but it's probably that thing. That's my guess, I don't know. I'm just guessing, all right? So don't take my word for that. I don't know, I, I don't really replace BIOS chips. Okay. Let's go ahead and get the new battery in. So we'll just get that, line it up, and then click that into place, all right? And then we'll get the screws back in. We're replacing the battery because we're running like the, um, what do you call it, diagnostics on boot, and it would always like say it can't detect the battery's percentage state. So hopefully this actually fixed that issue. We'll find out. And yeah, we're just gonna get all the screws back in and that's pretty much all there is to it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade or repair their devices as well, right? And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Again, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well because that's what the algorithm likes to see. All right, my views have been going down, so I don't know if that's just a YouTube thing is whatever's going on. I mean, my videos aren't entertaining. They're educational, so people aren't just watching, like, binge-watching my channel. At least I don't think, <laughs> I doubt anybody is binge-watching my channel, maybe, like, a couple. But, uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to learn how to fix computers or at least take apart pretty much every single type of laptop and desktop, then my channel will actually be very useful to you. So if you're wanting to start like a computer repair shop or something, yeah, watch all my videos and you can actually learn how to pretty much take apart almost every single type. All right, but uh, yeah, anyways, we're gonna get all these screws back in. Um, the two where the hinges are are black, so that's how you can tell. And the rest are these silver ones, okay? But again, it's usually best to put the same screws back where you got them. That's why I like to put them in the pattern and remove them. Sometimes you'll think they look the same, but they're slightly different. And then if you mess up and put them in there, you can actually destroy your computer. So yeah, all right. Anyways, let's go ahead and get the rest of these screws in. 
And then we're going to go ahead and power it up and see if we can run the diagnostic to see. All right, the way I put the rubber piece back is I line up one edge here, okay? And then I stick down quite a bit, about an inch or so. Then I'll go to this one and I'll try and pull it as far as I can to try and get this to line up best as possible, okay? Just like that. And then you just work your way back over. Same thing with this one, okay? And I also look, you can see the imprint of the lettering so you know which way it goes if you were flipping it all over the place. So same thing, we'll stick down about an inch or so of it, and then we'll go over here and pull it and then line up that edge. Once you do that, you just work your way all the way across towards the center. All right, let's go ahead and open this up and then see if we can check the battery status. Whoa, that's super dirty. So let me clean that up real quick. Ew, there's stuff all over their screen. But anyways, let's go ahead and power this up. Hopefully the battery has some charge. Since we did disconnect the battery, oh, okay, there you can see the BIOS has been reset. That's interesting. Normally it takes a very long time to show this screen after the BIOS has been reset, but that was like almost instant. So I'm gonna press escape to see the menu here once it starts up. I forget which one is to check the diagnostics. So escape and it says pause startup. Here you can see F1 system information, F2 system diagnostics, F9 boot menu, F10 boot uh, bio setup, and F11 system recovery. So we're gonna press F2 for system diagnostics. And you can see it's doing the hardware or whatever thing. Let's see if there's any change now. We're gonna go to component, te component tests. Wow, I already feel it's faster actually. So power, and then we're gonna do battery. And let's run once. Okay, and I think it's actually running Oh, there you go. Pass ID, okay? Temperature, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's see what happens if I do component test, power, and I do power source test. I'll run once. That's where I kept seeing the error before as well. Test in progress. Please connect to AC adapter you wish to test. So let me do that before it wouldn't give me this error. All right, I'll be back. All right, I'm back. So we plugged it in. Let's go ahead and run the test. Also, what I noticed, oh, okay, so now you can see battery, oh, it still says um, charge state not available, but it gives like a green check mark. Before it would show like a yellow. So let's try one more time. Power, power source test, run once. I'm surprised the test, it is plugged in. What is it talking about? Did it get disconnected or something? Oh, maybe it wants, it's just asking for that. Okay. AC adapter might shut down and remain without put to its conditions. Can trigger over current temperature. Hmm. Did it do something weird? See the charge light was white. Actually, it's off right now. Hmm. To cover adapter output, unplug the adapter from power cord approximately 10 seconds and then reconnect. Please verify you have unplugged AC adapter from the power cord and then press enter. Okay, so. You didn't want me to do it while it's plugged in? Oh, it's giving me the countdown timer. Okay, so I think when it did the test, it made the charger turn off. So I had to unplug it from there. Okay, now it says to please reconnect it. And okay, now the orange light is on. I don't know if you can see it. All right. So now we'll say okay. Oh, why did the AC adapter shut itself off again? An AC adapter might shut down and remain without output due to conditions that can trigger overcurrent. So for some reason it's over doing an overcurrent. I mean, I hear some weird noise coming from the thing. So I think Either something's wrong with their charger or something's wrong with their motherboard because it's making like high pitch sounds there. I don't know if it picks it up in the camera. Okay, it's showing orange. Let's, oh, and now it's making the overcurrent sound again. Yeah, and then it just stopped. So I don't know what's going on there. I guess we'll have to cancel this. Let me see what happens if I do it without that plugged in. I think their charger is also bad. 
Oh yeah, I have to leave it unplugged for like 10 seconds. So that's pretty strange. Their charger's doing some weird stuff. But now their computer's actually running faster, so I don't know. Okay, let's plug it back in and let's see here. Now it's orange again. So I don't know what's going on with that. It's doing a high pitch sound and then it shuts off. So something's weird here that's causing their charger to randomly short out. I'm gonna see if I have another charger to test and then we'll see. All right, I'll be back. All right, let's try this charger. Is there gonna be a difference? It's on. It's not giving the high pitch sound. Okay, components tests. Oops, nope, go back. Power, power source, run once. Yeah, I think their charger's also bad. Interesting. Let's see if I plug this back in. Actually, I didn't unplug the power, huh? Yeah, I have to plug unplug the actual power from it. Yep, it does some weird like high pitch sound. Yeah, it does some weird high pitch thing and then it shuts off. So their charger is actually also bad as well. Interesting. Okay, that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, like, comment, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Again, um, if you can't help out that way, like, comment, subscribe, watch a few others. And yeah, see you all in the next one. Let's drop this. Bye.